Why don't you tell me about the whole life after transplant? The recovery process was more or less okay. There, were, uh, there was a minor complication with a potential rejection, but the care team very quickly identified it and treated it. And within a week, I was home. Pain was minimal. And I feel like the discomfort primarily was if I had to cough. And I think that's something that's probably uh, pretty similar with any other surgery. I remember after he got discharged and he went home, we, we went over like immediately. I, don't, I honestly don't remember if we brought anything specifically. It was, we didn't bring Dairy Queen. Uh, but we just got together and I still remember he was wearing this ratty shirt he likes. Uh, it's like a PJ shirt essentially. And he's just sitting there and, and um, his, his you know, he was sore because of the surgery and all that, so we weren't moving around very much and all that. And Being at home, however, uh, life got a little bit more difficult. Having to move around a home made things a little bit trickier in terms of pain management. Didn't want to hug him, didn't want to get too close and all that kind of stuff because of COVID and, and all that. But we were just yeah, very happy, very relieved for him to be home. And I think it just felt so much more real for him to be in his own home and us to be there outside of a hospital setting. Uh, so that was really good. Within, within a month, I was able to be at about 80% capacity. Of course, I was careful with the way I moved, but it was surprisingly quick. So on that note, what is the first meal you had after your transplant that you really felt excited about? <laughs> potatoes. I love potatoes, and potatoes, unfortunately, are quite high in potassium. Uh, so I could only eat them in small doses, or I would have my dietitian upset at me, saying, like, why do you do this again? And so, uh, yeah, I, had a, I, I, I honestly don't recall the first meal, because I think I was still a little bit drugged up on the painkillers. Um, but uh, I do re recall potatoes being the first meal that I was really like, yes, this is, <laughs> this is the life. So, yeah, yeah, some potatoes. And what, um, do you want to tell us about the anniversary that you just celebrated? Yeah, um, I celebrated the one year transplant anniversary of, uh, of the surgery. And while we didn't do anything necessarily to celebrate, I think we're waiting for the weekend to, to do that. There's a, a movie we've been meaning to watch for a long time, uh, Dune. It's quite popular and, and growing up we used to play the video game. So it's been, it's been a long time that we have not watched it and we've been putting it off. So we're gonna celebrate, um, maybe have some good food and maybe a beverage or two and, and just uh, relax and take it easy, yeah. That sounds awesome. It was, it's hard to believe that it's been a year and that the state of my life now is so different from a year prior. When I went into the surgery, I, was, I thought I was in great shape. I tolerated peritoneal dialysis extraordinarily well, but now being you know, a year after the transplant, I realized just how much impact um, my health had on my overall, my, my, my overall life. My energy levels are far, far better than I had when I was on dialysis. So long story short, we're going to celebrate on the weekend uh, just to be able to you know, really be grateful for the second lease on life I've had. Awesome. And then what would you like to say or what was one thing you might want to say to our viewers about kidney disease, organ donation or the transplant process if somebody was going to take one thing away from? watching today. If there's one thing that you should take away from this, it's that you should get checked early. Uh, my brother was so fortunate that just by virtue of being assessed for donation, uh, we found what could potentially become end-stage renal disease. And so if there is one thing, it's to get yourself checked. You can contact your GP for a simple blood test and they'll be able to take care of you. So obviously you're a really huge support system for your brother, for Alan, you're very close. Um, for our listeners that are watching right now that are, you know, having a loved one that's going through kidney disease or kidney transplant, what words of encouragement or support would you say to them? Uh, don't wolf down Dairy Queen in front of them. Uh, the, the words of encouragement I would have for family or friends that are, that are trying to support somebody who's going through uh, chronic kidney disease and the diagnosis and the ongoing treatment or dialysis or anything like that is um, just check in, ask questions. Um, don't feel like you're bothering and obviously you can suss out the situation but I think just kind of you know every couple of weeks ask them how they're doing physically mentally um, you know just being in touch asking how their day went um, sending them stupid videos on YouTube and just just being there for them I think kind of 
putting yourself out there all the time and they can let you know if you're being overbearing. I'm not saying bombard them every single day, but I think that type of just giving them something else to think about and knowing that people care for them and are, are thinking about them all the time. And I think that's I think that's really important. Awesome, that's a wrap. Thanks for being here today, Eric. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me. That was yeah. fun. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by Kidney Plugged In. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And while you're at it, don't kidney around. Hit that subscribe button right now. It helps us out a ton. Want to learn more kidney facts? Check out our Did You Know playlist. Or hear from top kidney healthcare professionals over here with Ask the Expert. Cheers, and we'll see you next time on Kidney Plugged In.